feel free to record. The first three times the boy visited the garden, he didn't notice how there was always a convenient patch of moss to sit on, or how the flowers bloomed a little extra brightly when he came near. It didn't seem extraordinary or strange how the vines moved in the wind as if they were trying to reach out to him, or how the leaves rustling could almost be a voice if he listened close enough. He wasn't listening, or he was, but to endless streams of music on old tinny headphones that seen their best days two years ago. And beyond that, he was listening with his soul to songs much darker than the gardens. Back again, V, he said. The boy didn't know why he'd taken to calling the garden V. He wasn't entirely sure he was talking to the garden at all, just to someone, to the universe perhaps, to himself most likely. But each day he'd find himself drawn back, ditching friends that laughed a little too loud and drank a little too much. Friends who cared more about their laughter than his struggle. Do you ever feel like you're changing? He asked for the garden. Even when you thought that you were done. Like, for some reason, all of the things that made so much sense to you don't make sense anymore. There was no reply, of course. He sat among the flower beds and looked out into the street and sighed, running a hand through his newly cropped hair. Underneath the old band shirt he wore, his binder dug in just below his ribs. He'd wanted to get something full length, might have done if he hadn't had sudden, very sudden other expenses. Yeah, me too, me, V, me too he said, as if the garden had heard him and understood. It would be so easy if that was just how it was, if every time he spoke, people just got it. Got why he used different pronouns now, or why he couldn't go back home like everyone else at the end of a long day of too much of nothing at all. No 16-year-old expected to lose their home so suddenly, or if they prepared for it as he had. Even then, the blow was harsh and unrelenting, not just once with a clean cut, but over and over again, as all the little things he couldn't do now struck him. Sometimes it felt like those strikes were the only thing keeping him rooted to the rest of the world. Reminders that they hurt because he was still human, not the monstrous thing that his parents considered him to be. A stray gust of wind blew one of the trailing vines from the garden wall across his shoulder in an awkward one-armed hug, but he detached from it gently, pushing it away. I'm not the sort of person that's made to be touched. I'm not solid enough. I'll only crumble. No more wind, no more vines. Just sad sighs as air rushed through the gaps in the trellis. He felt like joining them, and yet he hadn't cried a single tear since his parents had thrown him out. Boys didn't cry, and he was allowed to be a boy now. And yet he wasn't allowed to be anything else. Certainly not a child. He stood, looking at a garden that wasn't made for the likes of him, and turned away. That was all he had now. Stolen moments and things that belonged to other people. Worn sofas and leftovers and pitying stares from overprotective mothers. He never knew if they pitied him for his parents' rejection or his parents for having a broken child. The deep breath caught him at the edge of the garden, where the sanctuary became the real world. For a moment he stood with a foot in both, feeling so distinctly the separation between the two that he could have sworn he'd stepped through a portal to another dimension. See you again, V. Same time next week? I'm sorry we've had to cut down. I miss seeing you on weekdays. If he survived till next week. If the bits of food he scrounged from friends and the nights he managed to wrangle an invite to stay over were enough. His father had always warned him against finding a man that couldn't stand on his own two feet, that couldn't provide for himself and was always waiting for someone to come and save him, do the laundry for him, cook and clean. He hadn't wanted a son-in-law that was a waste of space, he said. He never said anything about have a, having a son that was. Of course he could do those things, but they got a lot harder when there was no washing machine to put the laundry in and no stove for the cooking. Slowly, reluctantly, he stepped away from the plants and their accepting looks and back into the world where the looks became harsher and more concerned. And even the kind people had something to say, some opinion on who he was. It wasn't an opinion, it was a fact. The world did its thing bit by bit, it ate him up, stealing a word here and a word there, or that little smile he'd always thought would never leave him. The love of things left him too, the hobbies he had no money to fund anymore, the friends who slowly drifted away from him as they realised he wasn't what he used to be. They thought it was him coming out. You've changed, over and over again, you've changed, and he had. He'd changed so much, become so bitter and jaded and not the person he'd been before. 
but it had nothing to do with his gender and everything to do with all the times the world twisted and molded him into their perfect vision of a trans man. The gender identity clinic that wanted a piece of his soul for every visit, they asked him what toys he played with as a child and how he liked to dress, and whether he wore makeup as if that had anything to do with what being a man was. The woman from the housing place that wanted him to confirm over and over again the story of how his parents had told him to never darken the doorstep again. The mental health team that quizzed and quizzed him about the difference between gender dysphoria and a child simply playing pretend. That asked him delicately about trauma he'd never experienced and that even if he had would have no bearing on him knowing in his heart and his body was the wrong one. He wanted to scream at all of them until his lungs gave out that this wasn't how it was supposed to be. That it wasn't who he was that caused him pain but the world's refusal to accept it. And through it all there was the garden V the peace and tranquility, the way it always felt as though the, it was there for him, though the trees and the vines and the flowers had existed long before him and would exist long after. He walked through the gates and checked on the flowers, not daring to pull any weeds, but bringing a little watering can that he filled from the water fountain near the park. And it felt like V was waiting, listening willingly to his endless rambling about school and the many teams that claimed to be there to protect his welfare, and yet left him feeling more empty and broken, appointment by appointment. In autumn, he got a temporary placement in a flat and there was no one left to tell. There was no one left to laugh with him to show around the flat proudly as he fixed it up with some bad DIY and even worse furniture. There was no one to laugh or at least cringe when he discovered a pair of lace panties down the drain that was stopping the water going through, presumably from the previous owner. So he wadded up the underwear without a single ounce of awkward laughter and threw them in with the rest of the rubbish, washing his hands repeatedly until they felt clean again. The underwear would give his new neighbour, the guy who couldn't seem to figure out whether to check him out or fist bump him when they met, something to think about. I wish you were here, V. That wasn't quite true, but the truth was something he couldn't really say aloud. He wished he was there with V instead. He wished he could build a home among the flowers and the vines and trees, and have a friend that he could sit and talk to day in, day out, instead of the rattle of an old washing machine and the low hum of a heater that did absolutely nothing to heat the room. He'd gotten rid of the staff that had helped him to find a place now, thankfully, only to replace a small bossy woman with a 30-year-old man who thought he was down with the kids because he asked what boy bands they liked and knew a bunch of skateboarding terms that he used incorrectly. There was something about being an adult way before your time that felt like skipping a step on a set of instructions. Sure, you could get to the end, but there would always be that one part of the structure that wobbled a bit every now and again because there was nothing to fill the gap where it should have been. He spent a few nights in the new flat before he went to see V again. It felt different somehow. The leaves were turning orange on the trees and different plants showed their heads compared to the ones there in summer. But the soul of the place was the same. How do you do that, V? He sat down on a rock that he could have sworn wasn't there last time and looked around. No litter, no kids hanging out, just him in the garden, same as always. How do you keep your soul the same when the outside changes? People looked at V and saw all the different plants, the yellowing leaves, the change of the seasons drifting past, and forgot to see how V moved the same way in the wind, how the peace was the same, how even when every plant that grew right that second was replaced, V would still be the garden. It was the same for him. He hadn't changed. He'd always been this, only no one could see it before. The flower bloomed near him, blue, but with white close to the centre. He didn't know what it was called, but he knew enough to know it shouldn't bloom that fast all of a sudden. There you go.